YouTube, what's going on? My name is Kevin the Tech Ninja, and today we're gonna do a review roundup of the Galaxy S6. All right guys, this is a review roundup. And the way it's gonna work is that we're gonna take a look at four different reviews. We're gonna compare each of the sections and we're gonna pull out some key points of each one. And then from there, we're going to make our own determination of the review and sort of get a consensus of what's going on and how people are feeling about the phone. All right, let's dig in. All right, the first review we're gonna look at is from Android Authority. Um, and the first section is design. Android Authority said the replaceable battery and expandable storage are the main holes here. And it's up to the user to decide if they are deal breakers. Nonetheless, this just might be one of the best looking phones that Samsung has ever made. And we're quite happy with the steps forward that Samsung has taken this long to finally take. Now let's take a look at digital trends. Comparisons with the iPhone 6 are common. When I showed the phone to a number of friends, even strangers, it was the first competing device people mentioned by name. And now mobile syrup. Gone is the slimy plastic and fake chrome edges of the previous galaxies, replaced with simple, high quality materials. Though the rear glass collects fingerprints like a mirror, its separation from the finish beneath reveals a changeling color palette that shimmers and wraps in shifting light. What looks black morphs to a pleasing and playful shade of blue when exposed to sunlight. It's actually quite beautiful. So from hearing this guys, it sounds like the Galaxy S6 is a true winner as far as design. Now it's a slim looking device. It has a beautiful color according to mobile syrup. Is that how the black, depending on the light, can turn it to blue. And also people are recognizing the Galaxy as a brand by its design people are comparing it directly to the iPhone. And for you and I, that may not be a big deal, but for the consumer market and for Samsung, that's a huge deal that people are respecting the Galaxy name. All right, the next section we're gonna take a look at is performance. Android Authority, where you might have previously noticed and got angered by the shutters and slowdowns of TouchWiz, we now have the smoothest iteration of Samsung's UI yet. And it's only further justified Samsung's move to stick with the processors they made in house. Digital trends. Everyday tasks like opening apps, web browsing, video streaming, and music playback went smoothly. I used TomTom Tom Go with it for vehicle navigation and it worked perfectly fine as well. Having reviewed previous Galaxy devices, I've known all too well how they could be prone to acting erratically over time. My media impressions was that the less is more important approach was the best thing that Samsung could have done. Mobile syrup. This is as close as Samsung has come to controlling the entire hardware stack. And it's the first North American device that the company has shipped since the Note 2 that leaves Qualcomm behind. Much was made about this reversal, but performance is paramount and the S6 does not disappoint. So it seems like an outstanding response as far as performance. People really enjoy the performance. They're saying it's a very fast device and they did everything in house. They really want the Apple approach. They didn't outsource for many things at all the processor, hardware, and some elements of the software is all done in-house. And it's showing that that works. That method is really good. And it looks like Samsung probably will stick with that um, because their performance is so great. Software, Android Authority. The Galaxy S6 flies through all these interface elements, even the multi and S window portions. And that is perhaps the biggest takeaway here. Users who just want a phone to work based on the typical Android multitasking and navigation experience will have no trouble with the Galaxy S6 and it's quite a feat. If you do want a bit extra, you can dig deeper without TouchWiz parading itself in their faces. This is definitely one of the smoothest and easiest software experiences Samsung has ever put out. And it stands out as one of the best in the current crop of flagship devices. Digital trends. It's clear that the Galaxy S6 that Samsung is starting to better understand how to utilize its own software in relation to the fruits of Android. In an effort to reduce bloat, somewhat at least, certain features are now treated as add-ons you can download separately from the Galaxy App Store if you want them. Indeed, one peek at the motion and gestures section under settings example how far Samsung has dialed things back in only two years. The result is much cleaner interface that's easier to navigate. Mobile Syrup. The takeaway that Samsung's reevaluation of its software priorities is the presence of more 
practicality useful features and far fewer that users will look at once again and ignore thereafter. Gone are the various hubs and hovering, air view, air gesture, air scroll, but remaining are the genuinely helpful tools like direct call, palm swipe to capture screenshot. The company claimed that it spent months with real customers gathering data on how people use the smartphones and the restraint shows. All right, guys, it looks like as far as software, it is a much, much lighter touch with, and that's what people have been hoping for for so long. So it looks like Samsung is coming through on that, and people are generally impressed by it. A lot of the settings that we've seen before where you had hundreds of uh, settings in the menus are now gone, and you can actually just dig into what you want exactly, and that's it. You could turn on these extra modules if you want, but um, if you want a stock-like experience, the Samsung S6 is not far from it. And that's a very good thing. And now to the section that a lot of people care about, the camera, Android Authority. I recently revisited the Galaxy Note 4 for the great camera experience to refamiliarize myself with the Samsung way of taking pictures. And it proved itself to be a great camera companion. The Galaxy S6 proves to be just as good, if not slightly better than the Note 4. And Samsung continues to provide one of the best camera experiences in the smartphone world. Digital trends. I was generally pleased with the shots that the phone took. It was definitely better in macro than the GS5 and in low light images were more detailed with better illumination and contrast. I can also say the same thing about shooting video. Where 2K and 4K modes are available, you still have to exercise some caution when shooting in either of those because they incur huge file sizes. And without a memory card to save you, you would have to offload them quickly to a computer or cloud storage backup. The Galaxy S6 takes superior photos to most Android phones and often shows up the iPhone 6, especially when it comes to special detail. In daylight shots, the iPhone 6 has more accurate tones and generally less grain, but the S6 wipes the floor with it in autofocus speed and overall resolution. The Galaxy even boasts a remarkable autofocusing tracking system that the subject moves at moderate speeds, manages to keep them in focus. So guys, once again, it sounds like the camera is the true winner here. Uh, when it comes to detail, when it comes to low light performance, they're comparing it to the iPhone 6. And that is a huge accomplishment because the iPhone over the past years, we all know has the best camera on any mobile device. The, a lot of other phones that rival it, but, but the iPhone is always the thing you compare it against. And they're comparing it to the iPhone and it said in some circumstances is better than the iPhone. And a lot of people are really respecting the Galaxy S6 camera and they're really happy with it. Now, I, I've actually know one of the guys that actually has a S6 Edge and he showed me this picture in low light. Now, before the picture was taken and then after the picture was taken, you'll see what the software actually does. It removed the grain, brought some colors out and made it a poppy image. And he was in a dimly lit bar. So uh, very impressive and Samsung outdid themselves with the camera. So overall, all the impressions that I'm getting from the phone is that in this amazing phone, uh, display, software, performance, hardware, everything together is crafted to make a beautiful package. Now, it just depends on if you like the style of the phone or not. That is a very subjective thing, but a lot of people do love the style of the phone, including myself. Um, when it comes to the Edge, I think that is really changing the game as far as bezels and the way we actually hold our phones because it's basically screen to screen, and that's so amazing. All right, guys, that is it. That was my review wrap up. Let me know if you like this type of video. I know it's a little bit different than what you'd expect, um, but since I don't have the phone, um, you know, I can't review it myself. So I want to take a look at some other early reviews out there and see what the general consensus is and things you guys can look forward to come April 11th in the United States. As always, guys, my name is Kevin the Tech Ninja. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel, and comment or whatever you guys want to do. I don't know. All right, guys, uh, have yourself a great day and uh, take care. Peace.